after watching this video lecture, students are going to be able to correlate pressure um, to the behavior of gases. Um, you're going to be able to identify the origins of atmospheric pressure, and you're going to be able to convert between key units of pressure. So pressure is going to correspond to the relationship between force um, over a specific area. So if we go ahead and we look at an example where, let's say, we have five particles um, of gases floating around inside a container with a specific um, volume, right? Okay, and so that volume um, is where that gas is going to expand into and occupy. Now, as the gas particles are floating around, again, they're bumping into the sides of the container and exerting pressure. So they're applying force over the surface area of that container. Now, if I take those same five particles, okay, and distribute them in a smaller container, the same forces are going to be being applied to the sides of the container, okay, but the area is going to be significantly smaller. So the pressure inside this container is going to be higher than in this container that has a larger area or a larger volume. Okay, so your pressure is going to correspond to force over an area, okay, and we're going to be looking at specific pressure values here. So the first pressure we're going to talk about is atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure. Okay, atmospheric pressure is the pressure that's exerted by the weight of the atmosphere. All the gases that make up our atmosphere um, press down on us on the surface of the earth. Okay, um, and depending on where you are, you know, if you're at sea level, okay, or you're at the top of Mount Everest, the amount of atmosphere or gases above you is going to be different. So the less gas you have pushing down on you, the less atmosphere you have, um, the less pressure is being exerted on you versus, you know, down at sea level. Obviously, there's going to be significantly more atmosphere pressing down on you. Now, atmospheric pressure is sometimes called barometric pressure because of the fact that it is measured with a barometer. Okay, um, so mercury uh, barometers are not as common as they used to be, but um, basically what they do is you have a bowl or a beaker or a container of mercury. Um, you have basically a udiometer. Um, that is filled with mercury that gets inverted into the container of mercury um, and depending on how much force or how much pressure is being applied to the surface of that uh, mercury in the bowl um, that's going to alter the height of the column of mercury okay and so depending on how much you know water's in the air that day or where you're located that's going to dictate uh, differences in terms of um, the height of the column of mercury okay and so that height of the column of mercury is going to correspond to your atmospheric pressure in what's known as millimeters of mercury okay and this is actually a unit of pressure that we're going to be discussing here um, so basically atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure um, are is a measure of the atmosphere above you now there are several main uh, units that you need to know and memorize, okay? So this relationship here um, corresponds all of the common uh, pressure units, okay? We have atmospheres of pressure that's going to be represented by ATM, okay? Millimeters of mercury, right? We just talked about that height of the column of mercury and the barometer. Um, that's going to be represented by MMHG, okay? Tor is just tor. <laughs> Um, kilopascal is going to be kPa, um, and psi, or pounds per square inch, um, is another unit of pressure um, that you need to know. Now, all of these are interconvertible, okay? Um, there's 14.7 psi for every 101.325 kPa, um, and we can use this relationship to convert between a certain uh, pressure in pounds per square inch or a pressure in kilopascals. So we're going to go ahead and apply that now. So let's go ahead and let's do some practice. All right, so we have 0 0.830 ATMs, um, and we want to convert that to kilopascals. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to start with our um, 830 ATMs, okay, and we're going to set up a dimensional analysis problem, okay, um, and we're going to get the relationship between kilopascals and atmospheres. Right, okay, so it's a 1 to 101.325 relationship. So I'm going to put my 101.325 kilopascals on top, okay, my 1 ATM down below. The reason I'm doing that is so that they'll cancel, right, ATM and ATM. I plug this into my calculator, and that gives me a value of 84.099. 
Okay, um, I have three significant figures to start with. Okay, so I'm gonna end up with three. So 84.1 kilopascals is gonna be what I end up with for my answer here. Okay, so notice I'm taking my relationship um, between kilopascals and atmospheres from this relationship here. I'm setting up a dimensional analysis problem, tracking my sig figs, and expressing my units. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple more here. Okay, so what we have here is we have uh, 1.23 zero millimeters of mercury okay the relationship between my millimeters of mercury and psi there's 14.7 psi pounds per square inch for every 760 millimeters of mercury okay i'm going to go ahead and plug that into our calculator that gives us 0 0.02379 um, 07 Okay, we got four significant figures in this number. So one, two, three, four. This is my fourth significant digit. So 0 0.02379 PSI is gonna be what my final units are for this particular conversion. Okay, and then if we look at this last problem here, we got 20.33 kilopascals. Okay, and we're gonna go between kilopascals and tor. Um, so there's 101.325 kilopascals for every 760 tor. Okay, we plug that into our calculator and that's gonna give us 152.4875. Okay, and with four significant figures here, we're gonna mark that fourth significant digit and that's gonna give us 152.5 tor in terms of our final answer here. So as we're doing these problems, guys, you're gonna get your relationships in between um, different units um, here. You guys are gonna need to memorize this. You set up your dimensional analysis problem, okay, what you want over what you have. You do your calculation, you round to the appropriate sig figs and indicate the new units.